everyone, it's Kayantha Virgilia. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. Before we even get into this video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to everybody that supported my last video. Like I honestly was not expecting to get as much love as I did, but I did get the love. Thank you for all the new subscriptions. I think within that time frame that from when I posted the video up until today, I have like a subscriber increase of like 60 people and I am just so happy. I'm glad y'all loved it. Thank you for supporting. Um, and with that being said, I have officially decided that I am going to continue on with the stories and just turn it into a XJW series type thing. And today we are dropping a new video, so keep watching. I'm a black woman. disfellowshipping story what happened um, during that meeting um, and how life was shortly after being disfellowshipped and now looking back how I feel about the whole thing so if you watched my last video you already know what happened so I had an ex we came clean to the elders about how we had been hunching for a while and at that meeting the things that I was asked like y'all it was so uncomfortable so there were three elders of course every judicial committee has three elders um, a judicial committee before I continue if you commit like any kind of sin they basically bring together a judicial committee and they meet with you to see how repentant or how sorry you are about what happened. So um, there were three elders, the youngest one's like, I think 30. Um, and mind you, I was, tw I had just turned 20 at the time. Um, and at the time, I really believed that the Holy Spirit was guiding these meetings. I really did believe that if I lied, that fire would like come raving up my boo hole. Not literally, but I did think that God would punish me in some in some kind of way. I would be punished for lying. But the conversation, just the whole meeting, was just really uncomfortable. For one, you know, the first they start off with a prayer and everything or whatever but the questions that I was being asked like because it was fornication I felt like okay I told y'all you know we had sex and I feel like that would have been enough you know just ask me how I feel about it ask me if I'm sorry and stuff and just move on but no 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 they get into how many times have you guys had sex when you didn't meet up to have sex was it to have sex or did y'all meet up because y'all missed each other and y'all just wanted to hang out um and most of the time it, it honestly well not most of the time like honestly all of the times it was like that like we would meet up and we would just go out like eat have lunch and then one thing always led to another um but um they would ask how many times y'all had sex or did y'all use protection and mind you at the time like i said i was 20 years old talking to three old der men in a room by myself and y'all aren't my parents y'all aren't my friends like i don't feel comfortable talking to y'all about this um and then came the question about if you use protection um and if you use protection all the time and then I was asked, do you know the consequences of not using protection? And then came the question of, well, what would happen if you didn't? I'm, I'm not a child, I, you know? I know the answer to this question, 
honestly this is starting to get a little uncomfortable and like I said if you watched my last video you know that I came out about how I was um, expecting and unfortunately suffered a miscarriage um, and that also came out because they asked if I was ever pregnant and I did say yes and they asked what happened to the baby and passively asked if I had an abortion um, basically how the conversation went was were you ever pregnant I answered yes what happened to the baby I said I lost the pregnancy um, okay how did you lose the pregnancy I said I had a miscarriage well why did you have a miscarriage I don't know I was stressed out I was afraid of how people would react I was afraid of how my parents would react like I was I think I had I was either I had just turned 19 at the time I think or I was still 18 going on 19 at the time how is an 18 year old and I think my ex was like 21 at the time how are we supposed to care for a child right now you know just the stress of thinking about all that thinking about how everybody else is going to react to the whole situation and then came the question of well did you do anything intentionally to cause you no are you sure you did it you didn't take anything are you asking me if i had an abortion then jumps in the other brother no 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 that's not what he's asking well he just asked if i purposefully did anything to cause me to lose my pregnancy um so that was kind of like red flag number one at that point i was just kind of like i just kind of shut down and i was just like you know what this meeting is gonna go how it goes so whatever happens happens i really whatever so um what you talk about in these meetings are supposed to be confidential because the point of you coming and talking to the elders honestly is supposed to be because you're repentant well in most cases if you basically tell on yourself it's because you're repentant and you're seeking help and you're seeking counsel um it's supposed to be in a non-judgmental way um on their part and they're supposed to be there as support so for me it was just kind of like i don't know how i feel about this anymore so um after that meeting was over um we all went home they said they'll let me know like what happens or whatever so i ended up leaving and they continue to um, talk amongst themselves and they basically come to a conclusion or whatever. Um, so originally, um, I, I was going to appeal. Basically, they come to a conclusion and say, oh, okay, you're going to get this fellowship or you're going to be put on reproof or whatever the case may be. And you have seven days to appeal it. Basically, you have seven days to decide, okay, I want another body of elders to take a look at my case. I want them to speak to me. I guess that's how it works. They speak to you. But I never went through with my appeal. I did write my appeal letter and I was going to go through with it. Then one day, my ex texted me and said that his brother called him and asked, yo why did such and such okay you know what? i don't even care this is whatever because i was gonna leave things out but <laughs> it's just gonna be raw and uncut okay um yeah so my ex told me that his brother called him and asked if we ever had an abortion and i'm like that was supposed to be like yo I'm, i don't know why this is such like a touchy conversation for me like i'm really getting emotional right now hold it together but that was supposed to be like confidential that was supposed to be confidential information um and the fact that you know someone would just and I, I know who it was you know I it's whatever now but the fact that we go to these meetings and we're supposed to be seeking help and you go behind my back and spread my business and now it made its way like to 
a different state. So after, um, after the whole brother thing, um, one of my old friends ended up saying, I heard that you had an abortion. And I'm like, that never happened or whatever. But that's really the main reason why I decided that I didn't want to go back and it wasn't for me and yeah so basically I dropped the appeal and I was just like it is what it is um, I'm not even gonna appeal anymore and after that I was still like on the fence and I was like I'm just gonna keep going to meetings I I still wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt I thought about it and I was like I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna try to come back and I ended up switching congregations, ended up going, I was in a Creole congregation. I ended up switching to an English congregation and I stayed for about six, seven months. And after that, I was just like, I just kind of gave up. I was like, I just don't, I just feel the fakeness and it just, it wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. Um, so before I even got this fellowship, um, when everything came out, I was still in the process of talking to the elders. Nothing was official yet. Um, I had to move out of my house. I ended up living with my second oldest brother for a little bit. And then I moved in with my oldest brother. Um, life after, well, y'all, please. Life after getting this fellowship completely changes a person. Um, like I stated in my last video, I didn't have friends in school. Like I didn't have people outside of the Kingdom Hall that I spoke to. So that was extremely hard. Um, my brothers and I, honestly, before this, we weren't really all that close because they were disfellowship too. So I wasn't supposed to have any kind of communication or contact with them. We didn't go out and do stuff together like that um, at all for that matter. So it was kind of hard. Um, after getting this fellowship all of my childhood best friends completely like cut off like that um my college graduation i ended up graduating from nursing school um, i got this fellowship in june graduated from nursing school in november and the only people that was there were my two brothers their wives my aunt and my three nieces that was it. My parents weren't at my graduation, which completely shattered me. Um, Cause I wanted my mom to pin me. Um, none of my friends came to my graduation. It was hard. Those first few months after being this fellowship was definitely hard. Graduation was the hardest one. Um, no, nobody was there. Like, I mean, aside from my brothers, which I'm, my brothers and my sister-in-laws, which I'm completely grateful for and I love them so much. But at the time, it was like my high school graduation, you have to understand, like my high school graduation, my entire congregation pretty much was there, you know? And looking at college graduation, my own parents didn't show up, which is the saddest, saddest part. Um, I had many, many, many nights where I just couldn't sleep. Just so depressed thinking about how all of my friends just, I don't have any friends. And it took me a long time to actually try to go out and like communicate with people and like try to actually go out and do stuff instead of sitting around moping around all the time. Or whatever but now like standing at where I'm standing now looking back at everything I'm just like what the fudge cake was that like that was insane like it was so normal when you were in and now that you're out you're like I actually did all that I actually believe don't get me wrong i believe in god i believe in jesus christ as our savior 
um, there's a lot of stuff that I learned when I was a Jehovah's Witness that I have brought into my current life now. Um, but there's just a lot of stuff that I just, there's hypocrisy. Um, people are hypocrites, you know, we're not supposed to judge, we're not supposed to gossip, but gossip is the biggest number one thing, um, you know, but it's it wasn't all bad. I made some really amazing friends. I made some unbreakable bonds that obviously broke but I mean it is what it is you know it's all a learning experience I'm glad that it all happened now than later because there's a lot of stuff that I probably would have accomplished that I have accomplished within this first year that I have been this fellowship whoa we're in 2020 oh my god it's been two years it's been two years. Dang, that went by fast. Oh my goodness. It's been two years. So yeah, it's been a lot of change. Um, Y'all, I feel like I was all over the place with this video. Forgive me. I honestly wasn't expecting to do this. It's just kind of the light bulb just went off and I just feel like I wanted to go on a little rant for a minute. So this is the conclusion of this video. Thank you again, you guys, for all the support. Um, I will definitely be bringing more stories. And speaking of more stories, I know y'all want to know about this ex. That's what my next video is going to be, okay? Can't promise it's going to be my next video, but one of my next videos. We are talking about the ex, because baby, where is he now? Hmm. Where, where, Where is he now? Where is he? y'all but anyways that's it for today's video please don't forget to like comment share subscribe 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 and subscribe some more all right leave feedback in the comments down below more content that y'all want to see and i will see y'all in my next video bye